Hey everybody, so I have here on me the Nubia Z20. I've been using this phone for the past three weeks in Hong Kong and in Thailand. So you'll notice right off the bat that this phone doesn't have a notch at all. That's because this phone doesn't have a selfie camera. Instead, this phone has a screen on the back. So you take selfies with the main camera. So if you follow smartphones, you know that this idea is not new. Nubia actually introduced something like this last year with the Nubia X and Vivo also did something like this with the Vivo Nix Dual Display Edition. But Nubia is the first to develop this idea. This is the second attempt at it and this is a much better phone than the Nubia X that came out last year. So that phone, which I also tested, had a pretty good looking screen on the front but the back screen was um, LCD technology. It didn't get too bright. And it was genuinely really low res, like I think less than 720p. Now you'll notice that the front screen's actually curved on both sides like a Samsung Galaxy phone. And um, in fact, the front and the back glass both curve the exact same way. So you have a very symmetrical phone, meaning the front and the back both curve at the same point into the chassis, the aluminum chassis. And it feels very good in the hand. I know not everyone likes curved screen phones, but I like it, I'm a fan. I like running my hand through a phone like this and on a curved screen device, it just feels a lot smoother than on a phone with a flat panel like on my Google Pixel 4 right now. It actually feels a little bit more rougher doing this than on the Nubia Z20. This is a nice looking phone, nice feeling phone too. So if you watched my Nubia X review last year, you remember that that phone actually could not run Google apps at all which made the phone basically unusable for anyone outside China. So the Z20 improves on that dramatically by allowing you to run Google apps. In fact, I'm running stock Android on this phone right now. And I was able to flash stock Android because Nubia made stock Android available on its official website. That means um, this is a real stock Android software that's been optimized by Nubia. It's not like one of those third party stock Androids that you flash that may not work. And installing stock Android on this phone is very, very easy too. Unfortunately, this is still Android 9, so you don't get a lot of the Android 10 features like dark mode. Instead, everything is still like really bright. And also, you have to use three button navigation. There is no swipe gesture, and there isn't even that stupid Google pill navigation on Android 9 that I hated. So, three buttons. I don't mind it for the most part, but unfortunately you can't hide the buttons too. So this is a complete waste of space. If I'm reading an article or I'm on Instagram, you know, looking at Instagram stories, I want stories to fill up an entire screen. Instead, it does not because the buttons are always there. Now in terms of hardware, the triple camera system in the back, it's headlined by a 48 megapixel main camera. That's a Sony IMX sensor with an aperture f1.7. There's also a 16 megapixel wide angle lens and an 8 megapixel telephoto zoom lens that allows two times loss of zoom. Powering the phone is a Snapdragon 855 Plus and 8 gigs of RAM. So, in terms of performance, there's absolutely no issues whatsoever. Snapdragon 855 Plus, 8 gigs of RAM. And I believe there's 120 gigs of internal storage in this. So in terms of specs, everything in the Nubia Z20 is pretty top notch, which makes the phone a good deal because this phone sells for 500 US dollars or around 500 bucks. So the reason the second screen exists is to allow you to take selfies without needing a notch. I mean, that seems a little bit overkill, right? I think Nubia knows that. That's why Nubia actually um, fine-tuned the software to take advantage of having two screens and it's actually kind of useful so I'll show you right now so basically this phone operates apps on two separate screens like it's if it's two separate device so let's say I have Instagram open on the main screen and now I go to the back screen and I have the camera open so this phone remembers the app so if I jump back to the main screen I'm back on Instagram I go to the back I'm back on the camera. So now you might be wondering, what's the point of this? This is actually pretty useful if you're someone who's always chatting with your friends. Let's say I'm on WhatsApp right now, I don't have it set up, but let's say I'm in WhatsApp right now, chatting with my friends, and then on the front, I am navigating on Google Maps. So I can navigate right now, and then my friend send me a message, then I just flip around, and I can continue chatting right here. Oh, and I can go back and continue navigating without losing my progress. Now, of course, you can do this on a traditional phone by just quickly switching between apps. So I wouldn't say this is an absolute killer feature, 
but it is nice to have. It shows that at least Nubia has thought about this phone having two screens and ways that you can make use of the two screens. Now as for the camera, I would say that the camera of the Nubia Z20 is pretty solid for a mid-tier Chinese device. The camera app is pretty easy to use, it's a swipe heavy interface. And you have night mode, uh, video, you can shoot up to 4K, 30, all that. And you can also achieve up to 10 times zoom. That's pretty respectable 10 times zoom on this camera. That uses a combination of data from the 48 megapixel sensor and the 8 megapixel telephoto zoom. So you see 10 times zoom photo is pretty respectable. And you can even go higher too. You can do digital zoom up to, I believe, 50. No, 30. You can get up to 30 times zoom, but at 30 times zoom, it starts getting a little bit janky. Now, the wide-angle camera, it's pretty decent. You see, there's not much barrel distortion, but you do lose a lot of details outside of the um, center of the image. See, the center of the image is pretty decent, but once you go to the edges, it's, you lose a lot of details. Now, I've been using this phone for like three weeks. I brought it with me to Thailand. So as you can see, this camera is actually pretty capable. If you have good lighting, you can get a really nice image. So these are pixel binned 12 megapixel photos. You see dynamic range is pretty good. This is a wide angle image. Like during the day, this camera is good, man. I don't have much complaints whatsoever. Now, of course, when you take photos in low light situation, like right here, the sun's beginning to set. Then you start seeing a little bit of like loss of details. It's a little bit blurry, a little bit noisy. But you can turn on night mode and improve photo by quite a bit. So this right here is shot with night mode and at two times zoom. So it's pretty nice. And five times zoom right here, and I believe 10 times zoom. So you see 10 times zoom is still really respectable. So I'm gonna show you some more photo samples right here. As you can see, the camera is great during the day and at night. It's decent, not bad. Now, unfortunately, in terms of video, performance is pretty mediocre. There's no stabilization at all. So whether you're shooting at 4K 30 or 1080 30, it's just really, really shaky. But you know what? I'm, I'm pushing this on purpose. I'm walking on purpose. If I actually keep still, then the lighting and dynamic range in videos are pretty good. Although you see, as I'm trying to pan, video becomes quite a bit jerky. And of course, this main camera system is also used for selfies. So I think for selfies, it's actually overqualified considering you have a triple camera system. So you can do, you know, traditional selfie close crop or you can get wide angle. So you get a lot more into the frame. And obviously dynamic range and lighting is gonna be really good for selfies because this is a really capable camera system that you're using to shoot your face. In fact, I don't want 48 megapixels on my face, it's too much. And you know, you have the usual beauty filters, all of that, and a bunch of other um, different modes, like different exposure. Now you can even use pro mode on selfies, which is kind of crazy, right? You can adjust white balance and uh, focus, manual focus. Now you see, I mean, these are things that I usually don't get with selfie camera, but you get with the Nubia Z20 because this is using the main camera system on your face. Now in terms of battery life, this phone has a 4,000 mAh battery, so it's been lasting me all day. I've been getting like close to six hours of screen on time with no issue. Now ultimately, I think the Nubia Z20 is worth considering because this phone's only 500 bucks and you get a gorgeous OLED panel with no notch, no interruptions, no cutouts. And the phone looks and feels very good in my opinion. I like that it's curved and I like this gunmetal finish that gives it like a really like a piece of gemstone. It feels like a piece of gem to me when it's off. Like when it's flat on the table, I really like how this phone looks. And you know, it has more than enough power to handle any task thrown at it. The only weakness, it's video recording. So if you're someone who don't shoot a lot of videos, then this phone doesn't really have that big of a flaw. Okay, so that's about it for my review of the Nubia Z20. I'm gonna have more videos coming up, including on the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro and a new phone from Honor. So if you're interested in the newest tech from China, Korea, the US, all around, then please subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Review. So that's it for now. Once again, this is a Nubia Z20. Thanks for watching.